In this episode of the On.Net Show, we're going to learn about how we could authorize and authenticate using Azure Event Hubs with some folks from the Azure Event Hubs team. So, hope you check it out. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the On.Net Show. And we're going to continue our conversation about Azure Event Hubs with some folks from the Azure Event Hubs team. Now, I know every time we talk about messaging or just anything in Azure mm -hmm. in general, things like authorization and authentication are very important. That's right. right? Like people want to make sure that the right people or the right processes Correct. have the ability to not only send messages but receive messages. And Correct. we also want to make sure that people don't have too much power because that's right. we want to be able to restrict exactly what happens. Yes, that's so, right. So could we talk a little bit about how we could implement like some authentication and authorization mm -hmm. rules mm -hmm. with Azure Event Hubs? So with Event Hubs, uh, we offer two kind of uh, two different kind of uh, authentication and authorization. One is using SaaS policies, the shared access key mm -hmm. uh, signature policies. Uh, the other is with uh, integrating with uh, Azure Active Directory, yeah. which gives you the role-based access policies and um, managed identities, okay. uh, which you can use. And you know, basically, it's all about scoping down to, like you said. Who has the permission to do what? Right. Who could do what, and then yeah. I could set up, you know, yeah. roles and claims and things That's of that right. nature to those yes. specific, um, those yeah. specific things. Yes. Exactly. So why don't we take a look first and look at the SaaS policies and Correct. see, like, how do we create them? Mm -hmm. What can we do with them, mm -hmm. and, and those types of things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, when you create your event up namespace, by default, you're going to have root managed shared access key policy. Mm -hmm. So this will provide you all available claims which are managed, send, and listen. Okay. So we have if three you want different. Yeah, go ahead, if you want to create new policies or more granular policies in terms of, let's say, send only or lis listen only, you can click on add and then uh, name your policy. Uh, let's say send policy. And then I will pick send and then create. And then when you create this, this is particularly scoped to the namespace. It, right. You can go down to the entity level and also create uh, SaaS policies on, on that. Okay. So what it basically gives you uh, is three different types of claims, like we saw, mm -hmm. manage, send, and listen. Yeah. So the manage claim says that you can create resources or entities for that particular namespace or yeah. under that namespace. Uh, the send is pretty straightforward, saying, you know, um, if I were a producer and I want my producer to be just sending, not listening, right. not consuming. So I would just put them on the send claim saying, you can only send to this. Yeah. You have no power to receive it. Got so it. the same thing with listen, no uh, uh, entity which is having a listen claim can only listen or receive from that particular event hub and not send to that, send using that thing. So that makes sense. So we have created a send policy. So it's the same as the, the same experience as the default root managed shared access key. So basically, you have the keys and the connection string if you want to go with that one. So once you create the event up client, uh, with the send policy only, your client will be able to send, but not receive. Got it. And I, I'm, as I'm looking at the, the browser there, mm -hmm. like so you have the primary and the secondary key. Do we, we, I'm guessing we have the ability to rotate those That's keys correct. too, right? That's Just right. Like, That's okay. right. You can uh, rotate those keys. You can have them in secured and key vault and yeah. use pretty much. I think it's common across. Um, many Azure services which use the shared access policies as well. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. As you also mentioned, yeah, you can go to each event hub and then on the event hub tab, you have the same sort of experience. So you can go shared access policies. Here you don't have the default policy because at the namespace level you have the default policy which applies to the event hubs underlying the namespace. Got it. And at this point, uh, you can create uh, either managed sender or listen uh, claim policies. This will be per event hub. So this is how we're getting more granular down, right? Exactly. That yes. So, so, so that first one we saw was for the namespace, like yes. you mentioned before. Yes. But this particular one is, is for, for a particular entity inside of the namespace. So it's like if I have a namespace and I, I define all the three claims onto it, and I scope down into that particular entity and say mm -hmm. you only have the send permission yeah. and not listen on it. Mm -hmm. So if if the particular namespace has say three event hubs, mm -hmm. um, you can pretty much send and listen on two event hubs which has all the claims from the namespace. But that particular event hub which has only the send cannot uh, let you listen. Got it. That kind of granular scope that it defines. Okay, cool, 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 cool. 
So what other um, different types of mechanisms do we have, right? So we, we saw that there's SAS keys. Right? Yes. Like, do we have the ability to use like Azure Active Directory? Or That's do correct. Yeah. Access control? That's yeah. right, yes. Um, recently, we have G8 our RBAC authentication and authorization for uh, Azure Remote Apps Service. Mm -hmm. So um, if you go to Access Control tab, you can um, use our built-in roles to make assignments to secure identities. So we have three built-in roles, uh, data owner, a data sender, and a data receiver. Okay. As you can see here, this is all three roles. Basically, data owner gives you um, the same sort of um, like access permissions, like manage, send, and listen. Yeah. And receiver will only give you receive receipt, permission, yeah. and send, send is only send. Send will give only yeah. send, yeah. Gotcha. So then I could take anybody that's inside of my organization, for instance, Right. And you know, using my Active Directory credentials, I could assign them permissions to be able to yes. manage or correct. read or just or just write to. Yes, um, correct. Thing. That's correct. Like, yeah, so um, it's the Azure Active Directory, which is the governing principle here. Yeah. Uh, so whatever is um, in Azure Active Directory is how it. Uh, we also uh, uh, assign roles to. So anybody in uh, our organization or any organization having uh, integrated with AAD can now be defined roles or given permissions or access to. Got it. So what about managed identity? I know Azure has that mm -hmm. for some various services like SQL Server, for instance. Correct. Do we have the ability to use that in here as well? That's correct. It's the support on the SDK side. Uh, once you have role assignment for a, a particular uh, secure identity, mm -hmm. Or let's say uh, once you create a uh, let's say service VM or let's say Azure Functions, mm -hmm. yeah. so you enable managed identity, then that identity will be able to be used by our SDK. And you can so define roles and access permissions on that particular identity as well. Gotcha. Our, our managed identity, um, our managed identity API is pretty much straightforward. Basically, uh, you create you call it on the Event Hub client. We call create with managed identity, providing the uh, the host name and the event hub name you want to send and receive to. So the host name is nothing but the event hub's namespace name. Yeah. And yeah, and the entity name on which you want to define that role. Got it. Okay. And then, could you show us an example too of how we could use the SAS, um, the SAS token or SAS keys? Do you have a sample of that one too? I have it open already. No, I have closed those. Did you? Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I think it's 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 great that we have so mm -hmm. many different flexible mm -hmm. options. That's right. All right, because I know you might have scenarios where Correct. sometimes we want to authenticate a machine or a That's process right. or yes. a you know a non living being. Correct. Right, and then we have situations where we might want to have um, a developer or mm -hmm. you know a different mm -hmm. type of process. Mm -hmm. Right, so now we have these different options that we could use yes. based on those different scenarios, yes. right? Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, that's why uh, integrating with uh, Azure Active Directory gives us that flexibility where mm -hmm. you are registering into AAD yeah. or Azure Active Directory uh, uh, the application yep. or the particular role or that particular person or that particular user. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Mm -hmm. So here is a sample how you can uh, wire up the shared access signature and create your client on top of that. So basically, on the portal, you go to uh, Shared Access Policies tab. Uh, this one is And then you can copy the connection string with primary key from portal. And then you can use it uh, as a connection string. Gotcha. What I like about this approach is that we can just go in the portal and we can copy the entire connection yes, string so with the SAS key attached to it. Yes. Yeah. In right. the connection string, as you can see, you have the endpoint information, mm -hmm. uh, shared access key name, which is send policy, which we uh, yeah. recently yep. created, and the secret, which is shared access key, basically. Kay. And once you create the event of client, now depending on what permissions are allowed, then you can do send, receive, or manage operations. Gotcha. Okay. Awesome. Well, this is great. Is there anything else that we need to know about security in terms of like how we secure our Azure Event Hubs? Uh, maybe we can touch uh, base some of the different uh, like authentication flows. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, I, I think we talk about the major identity. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can show you our API briefly. So there are different uh, auth flows available from the AD side. Okay. So say for example, uh, interactive user login is one thing. Mm -hmm. So any user can go and then uh, like 
log into their account and then start using uh, our service or event apps. So mm -hmm. depending on what type of permissions are assigned to them. Right. Or let's say if you have an app and then you can authenticate your app with either a client secret or some certificate. So that's another scenario okay. we're supporting on the SDK side. And then so you have like client credential flows, right? Mm -hmm. like, so is, is that that's very similar to just me putting a username and password? Okay, uh, client credential is uh, basically a secret uh, approach. So uh, they're using the uh, Microsoft Identity Client here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So um, what you do is this: you need to create a token provider, which has uh, create a direct direct token provider, and then provide uh, a sync callback, which will provide the uh, uh, token back to the client itself. Got it. So in the um, in this uh, async callback, you need to basically uh, just manage the uh, authentication flow through AAD and then yeah. you know prove your true identity to AAD and then AAD will issue a token. So by the client, the token will be flowing to the service and service will authorize and then find out what type of permissions you have. Got it. Along with the predefined roles, uh, Event Hubs also supports custom roles. Uh, so you can um, provide role-based access based on custom roles as well. You want to touch base on how we do the custom roles? Yeah. Um, Built-in roles, as we talk about that, mm -hmm. we have owner, Receive. sender, and receiver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those have uh, those roles have some granular uh, permissions um, inside them. So you can use the same sort of permissions and then just craft your own custom role. Got it. For example, you can come up with a custom role where you allow um, the security identity to access to some storage account, some subscription, and also along with that, some event up service or mm -hmm. event up name. Oh. So you can do mix and match those kind of things. So it will be it will become your custom role. Got it. Got it. And so how how would I specify that? Is that something I specify in the portal, or do I that do it in code? Like how do I? No, you can up? you can create a custom role on uh, on the portal. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Nice. 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 Awesome. Well, hey, thank you all so much, man. This has been really great. And I think this is a really important thing mm -hmm. to know about, That's too, right. yep. as we're creating our um, Event Hub namespaces and yeah. instances. Yeah, I, as a last note, I want to add that although um, Event Hub supports both SaaS and uh, AAD, it's Microsoft oh. recommendation for mm -hmm. better security and um, provided granularity and everything mm -hmm. that um, most customers use uh, integrated um, uh, Azure AD provided role-based access policy support. Was course. that because it's it's a more hardened yes, approach? Yes, exactly. And less less yes. prone to like exactly, hacking, yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got it. There are yeah, uh, yeah. Azure AD itself uh, provides you one level of authentication and authorization on which we define much more um, deeper know, checks and yes, security exactly. verifications and, That's right. and things so, of that nature. Yeah. Okay. So you heard it. If you're going to use um, Azure Event Hub's recommended approach is to use a, um, Azure a AD to like secure all your yes, stuff. Yep. So again, thank you all for watching. This has been another episode of the On.Net Show, where we learned how we could authorize and authenticate our Azure Event Hub services, again, using .NET and the Azure portal.